Welcome to Brian's at the Gate. This is our video blog for November 27, 2018. Took the day off yesterday. It was part of our official uh, break here at Cedarville University, so we're picking it back up today. I'm sure next week we'll come back to our normal Monday routine. Uh, it seems like everybody's talking about immigration. I guess we should talk about immigration as well. Uh, you guys have probably seen the video mm -hmm. of uh, tear gas being used at our southern border. Um, it appears that everyone is becoming unglued to some extent over this, over this uh, incident. Uh, caravans are still working their way toward the southern border from Mexico and Central America. So we are at something of a flashpoint, I think, on immigration. So, I mean, Bert, when you take a step back, I mean, how do you look at what's happening right now uh, just from a critical perspective? Well, I, I think that uh, when you say critical perspective, elaborate a little bit. Yeah, I mean, when you think of it, is this, is this weird? Is this normal? Are we used well, to seeing I, I think, these kinds of... Well, I don't of... think it's normal what's okay. happening, at least not relative yeah, to us. Let's start in there. fact, uh, you know, if you look at th this was part of the caravan, the 5,000 yeah, people that are right. in Tijuana right now, we right. evidently didn't uh, seem to realize that they might get on a bus and get here a little bit quicker. <laughs> you know, that kind of surprised us. But uh, yeah, you, you can't have that kind of disorder I don't believe uh, coming into your border. I mean, to me, it's uh, reminiscent of a very uh, severe refugee problem that right. we've seen in in Europe with right. people trying to get into nations in Europe, which yep. is completely chaotic. And uh, it, it's odd from that standpoint. You know, in terms of numbers, uh, numbers of uh, of uh, people seeking asylum are down. The number uh, of people being granted asylum are down. Right. So I don't know exactly what all caused you know this big chunk here you know to come moving up the pipeline at this time. Yeah, I mean, some people think it was politically manipulated to coincide with presidential mm -hmm. elections or the uh, midterm elections we just had. I don't know if there's really any evidence for that. Um, Jeff, when you look at immigration kind of as an issue, I mean, where mm -hmm. would you assess we are as a, as a policy matter? And I think we'd all admit that it's broken at some level, but uh, where well, are we? Well, unfortunately, it's, it's broken in the sense that both extremes find it in their advantage to keep it broken and yeah. inflame it. Yeah. I, I think that's the real issue here. Uh, what's interesting to me is, is what's noticeably different about uh, certainly the progressive uh, advocacy kind of for their position, which is this. Uh, basically, they have, there, there are certain, I have heard quotes even on our blog, people have responded, that they do not believe that we as a nation have the right to have any border controls. Yeah, right. it, it's, it's not a, by any means a majority position, and right. the Democratic Party will not, will not go there. That's right. Nevertheless, the energy behind that is behind that idea that yep. we should have no limitations whatsoever, and that's precisely what the mainstream Americans will not tolerate. Right. And then on the other extreme, they're pointing to that extreme of open borders, and, and it just, uh, makes everything interesting. Uh, I, I don't know what you all thought of Mrs. Clinton's uh, speech on that, that light. I, I thought that was interesting. She suggested that, hey, we've got to have s basically some sort of sensible border controls because otherwise you're going to uh, elect crazies like Donald Trump instead of me. I mean, something like that uh, seemed to be the message that I heard. Right. Uh, and, and I think while she's, she's wrong on why we should be concerned about that, she's right to understand that, uh, and the Wall Street Journal had that, I don't know if you, uh, any of you saw that earlier today, the, the, by having immigration chaos, that precludes a sensible support for expanded immigration. Right. If we want to have a, a charitable and, and sympathetic approach to immigrants, we cannot make this a crisis. Right. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get these two extremes. So that's what I think is going on, unfortunately, uh, because I think both sides find it in their interest to inflame passions on this. Yeah, I think it's an interesting point of view. I, mean, I think politically, I think you're exactly right, that neither side really wants to solve this issue, or at least at their extremes. It's too convenient of a weapon. You know, why give, why give away the weapon right now? Well, it's emblematic uh, of, our, of our political process. Yeah. I mean, I don't think yeah. we really want to solve anything right now. What our politicians want to do is to point to themselves and to, you know, to be reelected. I don't think they're really, few of them are all that much interested in really governing. Yeah, no, I think you're right about that. It's sad, but I think you're right. I, I mean, Jeff, let me follow up on something that you said. I think the implication that we hear a lot is that even turning anyone away from our southern border shows a lack of compassion. You know, shows that we're not sympathetic and that we lack sort of this yeah. basic sense of decency toward people who clearly are in need. And I don't think any of us yeah, would argue yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, I, I think part of the problem, and this gets back to why we've got to have some sort of sensible policy, uh, I, I don't think asylum fits for one thing. You know, asylum, when I think about what that means, <laughs> at least to me, is someone that has a certain belief system 
and some or ideology, whatever, that were they to stay, they will be killed because yep. of that. Right. Not that I live in a pretty desperate situation, therefore I need to get out of it. Right. That's different from if we make that latter definition kind of the rule for getting into this country, we will have the problem that Europe had, and that's what will cause. And Mrs. Clinton's right; that will cause the extreme on the other end. You've got to have a sensible policy to continue to have public support for this. So asylum is doesn't seem to me to be the right answer, but a sensible compassion and immigration pro, uh, policy to le uh, give opportunities would be great. Here's the interesting thing. we ha I don't hear anything, anybody talking about what do we need to do vis-a-vis -vis our Central American policies to change the home country right. situation to improve it. You know, uh, if you go back to uh, policies of decades gone by, you know, America was roundly criticized for getting involved in those policies. Right, that's right. Yet it seems like it's either we need to do something to change the home front situation or we're going to have untold masses continue to come. And both of those are ugly kind of choices. So I don't know where the solution is. Well, they're not are. untold masses now. I mean, the numbers are not historically strange nor odd. No. And they're down a little bit over what they were uh, during the Obama years. Uh, so, I mean, this, this is more generated by media and, and politically generated. They, uh, I really don't think there's a huge crisis. If, if it, I agree with you now, but if we were to say, as some would say, that we should have no restrictions, I think you will have the floodgates open. Yeah. If, 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 if basically the doors are open to be, to be welcomed, then, then you'll have a lot more. And I think then you'll recreate the very hostility to, uh, that would pr preclude some sort of sensible immigration policy. That's my fear, at least. Well, what would be a sensible immigration policy? Uh, that's a good question. Now, I mean, what, what's the right amount? I mean, that, yeah. we, we, we've always struggled with that to some right. degree. Uh, you know, we, we've had discussions and sometimes arguments internally and uh, like yep. the rest of the world on, on what that right answer is. To me, it seems to be we need to have compassion and opportunity for those that want to come here. And if we have to have some sort of limits, I, w I want to see that be such that they bring some sort of skills. For instance, what if we had a policy right now that says uh, you, you don't get asylum, but you can have an expanded uh, entry v working level visas if you already speak English. What do you think that would do to uh, those that are in Central America that want to come, think they'd be learning English ahead of time? I think they would. That would help assimilation. That would help job placement. That would help reduce animosity and friction when they're here. All those are things that you could do with one. Yeah, you're just being ethnocentric, right? We couldn't possibly require it's, English for uh, people to it's, come it's, to the it's, country. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying <laughs> I'm being uh, U.S. culture sure, centric. We should, yeah. we should want to have yeah. someone that could fit in and immediately be integrated into society and not have to be shepherded over long periods of time uh, if, if we, have, if we yeah. have to have some sort of limits. It seems like assimilation is kind of the word yeah. that you don't hear thrown around a lot right now, at least in relation to immigration. I mean, Bert, what do you think about this idea that if immigrants come in, we have an obligation to assimilate them relatively quickly and get them part of the American creed, let's say? Well, uh, you know, culturally it's, it's very different than when we had peaks of uh, immigration earlier. And there was a time when it was virtually open. It was in the like, 1924 or something right. where we, we really started clamping down. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know what you, you know, when you say mm -hmm. quick, mm -hmm. unless culturally it's different now, I see no problem with one generation for assim assimilation you know, where the uh, immigrants' uh, children right. are completely mm -hmm. assimilated or more or less completely assimilated and the parents can uh, to some extent uh, you know, re retreat into a, an enclave that is more along what, the lines of what they were used to culturally. Right. Uh, so if we have a little China here, or if there's a you know a, some sort of a uh, you know another region that reflects a culture, I don't have any big issues with that. Uh, I don't I don't like the idea of uh, uh, mandating uh, English you know mm -hmm. uh, as a particular language. I believe they sh people should pick it up. I don't think we should make it easy for individuals not to learn English. But so far as that being a uh, a requirement of some sort, I wouldn't I wouldn't have it. Uh, I, I would think that one thing that you could do, and there will always be a problem with, uh, with quantity, is you could have a, a fee system of some, court, uh, some kind of market-based uh, fee system where we sold visas on the open market and allowed prices to uh, uh, reflect who would come in. Now that, there we would still have to, uh, you know, in some way, have a quantity cap. That's, a, that's an economist moved. talking. There's no doubt about that. I'd rather that. have English. <laughs> 
I think that's probably uh, yeah. People would but, criticize that yeah, probably yeah, as being right. elitist, right? As being too too well, focused it would, on. Well, again, it, when you I, mm -hmm. I think with what uh, Professor Heyman said in the in the uh, in the past, it, to me, what he's saying also is a bit elitist yeah, when you yeah. when you skills have a rule base. Yeah, yeah. 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 What I'm saying is rather than have the government choose what mm -hmm. skills that we let uh, the market decide what skills. And, and yes, it would be, I mean, you would exclude probably people that were less wealthy. In so doing, I think people that are more wealthy and more productive probably would, would have more of a tendency to come mm -hmm. in. And so that would kind of balance one of the, uh, you know, the, the issues that you're uh, uh, concerned about with low, uh, low skilled and lo low income people coming in. I, I don't really have any concerns with low skilled and low income people. I think there's lots of jobs uh, available. I think the assimilation aspect uh, is easier if you if they could have jobs and be able to plug in right. in quite quickly. So I think that would be support. One thing I would suggest, I think all of us are biased in this respect. It's very difficult for us. And, you know, I used to have a, a, an economist friend, you know, another economist. So obviously bad. Uh, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, he, he would always make this quip, which is absolutely true. If this was easy, it would have been solved a long time ago. Yeah, right? This, right, this right. is hard. This yep. is really hard. Yep. And it's easy for people to get sanctimonious on their own hobby horse. Yep. It's, it's, for instance, you were here in Cedarville, Ohio. Cedarville, Ohio is not the same. We would have a, I guarantee you, we would have a decidedly different uh, assessment of the impacts of immigration and what we would think would be sensible policies if we had been in Southern California yep. or Southern Arizona. Yeah. Because y y you're colored to a large degree by, by the experiences you have. And, and so I think it's a multitude of experiences. They may be biased one other way, but it's, it's easier to have uh, uh, an, an appreciation and, and, a, and an optimistic way of thinking about the world when you're not going to have to deal with those problems. And there are problems. As an economist, we know there are benefits and there are costs. Yep. So as always, I look at it, so how do we minimize the costs of, to have these kind of uh, sensible policies and get the most benefits to help as many people as possible? And, and I, I still think we're never going to be able to solve the problem of those that want to come in. There's not enough opportunity to get in for all those who want, certainly globally. Right. Uh, so the question is, how do we then create the institutions that will work in their home countries? And furthermore, I would say this as a Christian, uh, are, do, are we not supposed to take the dominion over all the yeah. world? Should we not be getting Christian values and institutions in these places such that they can thrive in their own area? Well, that was my follow-up. You guys, this is much more your area, your mm -hmm. expertise here than it is mine, but what, what kind of policies are you looking at for uh, increasing the quality of the homeland for them so that we remove the incentive. What could Americans do feasibly to, you know, to put it this way, to sort of raise up those Central American countries so there's not as much of a demand to come here? Yeah, that, that, that's the tough question. I'm not is it just that. money? Is uh, it no, just, it's not is just it? money. I mean, clearly in Honduras, I mean, the problem in Honduras is obviously the, the, the main problem is the drug lords, the drug, the crime and the corrupt government. And so, there's, there's no safety. There's le legitimate concerns for these people yeah. for, for, in that environment for their safety if they do not become part of these corrupt yep. institutions. You're talking so, rule of law. Yeah, though. rule of law. Yeah, so, right. so, yeah. so how could we shape with our foreign policy to lead to that, that goal? That's a tough problem. That's a tough but problem. that is the problem that needs to be focused on. I, I almost hear very little of the public discussion. How do we help the Hondurans have a better country so that they don't have to come in? I, I went on a missions trip to Honduras a few years ago, and I can tell you, uh, most of them really I, one of them specifically went up to Michigan. They don't like the cold. They like they would rather stay home, but there's no opportunity. Right. There's there's no the, there's no safety there. All those are reasons why they're migrating to America. Yeah. So, yeah. Bert, what do you think? Well, I, you know, it's almost an unanswerable question. I mean, we cannot. The United States, mm -hmm. other Western nations, cannot really uh, do too much to help those nations if they don't choose to. You know, it is so, still somewhat a mystery to us how we came to have the amount of, uh, of wealth that we have and have the kind of environment that makes individuals want to come here. Right. You know, we, we thought if we would just introduce democracy, uh, that, that would, you know, would, would be the ticket. And there, there are really, there are no tickets uh, to this. So it's cult. I, I, I could talk about it for two hours, but it is, it is a cultural thing. Yeah. And I think the church's role mm -hmm. uh, is, is to evangelize. But we really don't take dominion in the sense that uh, we see it in the Old Testament context. Uh, I mean, we, the, the, we, we, that's not what the church is about. The church is about uh, sharing Christ with others, discipling them, having them conform to the image of Christ, and then out of that flows uh, whatever cultural change comes. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm not sure what this we do is, in the short yeah. run, in the long run, 
it's, it, you know, the, the best thing that the believers could do is to evangelize and disciple uh, yeah. one another. You know, this, uh, is, here. this is a long-standing argument we have mm -hmm. here at Brains at the Gate over how exactly the church and we as the body of Christ should approach these kinds of issues. Jeff, you want to follow up real quick? I, I'm not going to go down that rabbit yeah. trail very far, uh, but I would point out, if we do not work on the institutions of these, because we have a similar problem right now uh, down in Venezuela. Sure. There are massive hordes yep. going over into Colombia, and that's causing all sorts of problems because of the, we, we talked about earlier, you have in Venezuela a failed state. And that's causing these problems. So how do we avoid the problem in the first place? I think that there needs to be a lot of discussion about how we change the, the institutions within those home countries. Because yeah. uh, uh, I will uh, quibble with uh, Dr. Wheeler on one point. We do know what works. We, we certainly don't think it's democracy per se, but we think ma markets and freedom and, and, and inclusive institutions, and you teach that part of it too, uh, those are gonna be what, what would help these things work better. How can we encourage that? That's yeah. a lot tougher issue, yeah. uh, but, but nevertheless. I think that would be the question. I mean, yeah. we, we understand uh, what conditions cause economic development to thrive. It's just that we uh, are not completely certain how to turn the key to get the motor right. on yeah. uh, in, in, in different that. places. Yes. Yeah. So real quick, is it unjust to use tear gas in the border? Is that something we should be up in arms about, the fact that, that mild force was used to disperse a crowd? Bert? No. No, Jeff? Do we use tear gas here in this country? Absolutely. In crowds? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here, and I, I, I don't like the images. I don't like any of the. Nobody no, it's likes horrible. This, no, you know? it's horrible. But, but the yeah. question is do we have the right to defend our border yeah. and decide who comes in and who, who doesn't? That's, a, that's exactly If you that's say the yes, yep. and I say that yes, we do have that yep. right, then what measures do you use to repulse yep. with people that are insisting on, on coming across them? Yeah. Uh, uh, it, Anyway, I, I think we should be working on trying to increase the numbers to come in. That's, right. that's a, a separate it's a issue. It's a different question, right? Uh, but, but whatever our policy is, we have the right to enforce that, yeah. I believe, until yeah. we change that policy, until we change the law. Uh, hmm. Not very politically correct, but I think, I think you're right. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for viewing. If you have any questions, and certainly leave them in the comments or send them to Matt and his marvelous Monday mailbag. Thanks for watching.